وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد This inshallah ta'ala is our third uh, episode We're going to carry on speaking about Al-Amru min makrillah In this episode inshallah ta'ala I want to speak about um, The importance of seeking refuge in Allah From your evil soul and shaytan and how that helps towards uh, not being a person who uh, feels secure from the plans of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his khutab that he would do alayhi salatu wa the sermons that he would do, and any important uh, reminder or lecture that the Messenger alayhi salatu wa wanted to do, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would start by mentioning and saying, وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَسَيِّئَاتِ عَمَالِنَا We seek refuge in Allah, the Prophet would say, from the evils of our nafs and the evils of our actions. So the nafs is something you seek refuge in Allah from. It is the nafs that wants to feel safe from the plans and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الإمام الترمذي نريت لني السنن من حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه that uh, Abu Bakr he came to the messenger and he said يا رسول الله مرني بشيء أقوله إذا أصبحت وإذا أمسيت Abu Bakr said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say to me command me something O Prophet of Allah Abu Bakr is saying صديق هذه الأمة Command me something that I could say in the morning and in the evening. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Qul say, Allahumma alim al ghaybi wa shahada. O Allah, the Lord of the universe, the seen and the unseen. Fatir as samawati wal ard. The one who created the earth, the one who created the sky, the heavens. رب كل شيء ومليكة The master of everything The king of everything أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except you أعوذ بك I seek refuge in you O oh Allah من شر نفسي I seek refuge in you O oh Allah from the evils of my soul ومن شر الشيطان and I seek refuge in you O oh Allah from shaytan وشركه and you can also say وَشَرَكِهِ وَشِرْكِهِ means and his helpers I seek refuge in shaitan and those who help him and aid him in misguiding the people Shaitan has friends, he has allies he has people who are working for him وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَيُوحُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ لِيُجَادِلُوكُمْ Shaitan has friends and colleagues and helpers who help him in misguiding the people so I seek refuge in Allah from shaitan and those who help him. And if we read it as وَشَرَكِهِ It means I seek refuge in Allah from shaitan. وَشَرَكِهِ And the instrument that he uses to misguide others. I seek refuge in Allah from that as well. The Prophet said to Abu Bakr قُلْهُ Say this dua إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ Say it in the morning. Say it in the evening. وَإِذَا أَخَذْتَ مَضْجَعَكَ And say it when you go to your bed. What we will benefit from this hadith is, or this dua that the Prophet taught Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu is that we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our soul. We seek refuge in Allah from shaitan. Shaitan is planning and plotting against us. He wants to misguide us. He wants us to feel safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he wants us to believe that we're good and we're righteous. And there's nothing wrong with us. That's what shaitan wants to convince us. And he wants Allah's punishment to come to us when we're least expecting it. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he elaborates here. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala points out that this nafs of ours, it's, it's one that calls us to evil. Allah says, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ Verily the nafs. What is it? لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ It commands evil. It calls the person to evil. And then Allah says, إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي Except those who Allah has bestowed upon them His mercy. There are, there are an exception. There are people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided them. And their nafs is nafs which is mutma'inna, a tranquil soul. A nafs that is in line with Allah's commandments and stays away from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have tranquility in their life. This is the nafs that we're all trying to work to, towards in order to achieve it and gain it. إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Verily Allah is one that is forgiving, a very merciful one. So if Allah is forgiving and is merciful, and our nafs is calling us to evil, who should we run to? We should run to Allah and not to our nafs that is calling us to misguidance, that wants to bring upon us destruction. We seek refuge in Allah from that nafs. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to protect us from that nafs. Because if we do, we will insha'Allah ta'ala be, we will not be from those who feel safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala in the ayah, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُ الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبَلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً the last part of the verse is what I want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ Anyone who is protected from the stinginess of his nafs, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Verily, they are the successful ones. Anyone who is protected from the evil of his nafs, verily, he is from the successful ones. Anyone who is protected from the bad traits that are generally present in the human nafs, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Verily, they are from the successful ones. This nafs, you need Allah Taala to help you to from the evils that it can do to you. This nafs, it's problematic. And subhanAllah, its evil traits become clear at times sometimes when you're least expecting it. At times when you don't even think it's going to do something, it does it. And a lot of people, they learn themselves in situations. They get to know who they really are. They didn't know themselves before that. They say, I wasn't expecting myself to do that. Why did I do that? How did that even come from me? How did that even occur from me? And the reason for that is, it is what the scholars call, It is those hidden evil traits in the nafs. Uh, which pops out in random situations. So you need to keep cleansing and keep cleansing and keep cleansing and get those traits that are hiding, pull them out, expose them out of your body and bring them out into the open and deal with them. Don't hide them. Don't cover them up. If you've got a wound on your body, you don't place creams on your body. What you do is you've, you've got a wound. You go to a doctor or you do surgery or you do something. And then if you want to put cream on it, you can. The cream is not going to change, it's not going to remove the wound. The wound is deeply into your body. So you need to get a, a doctor's uh, observation. وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ If you are protected from the evil of your nafs, then wallahi you are a successful person. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said something very powerful. He said, مَا مِن نَفْسٍ إِلَّا وَفِيهَا مَا فِي نَفْسِ فِرْعَوْنَ he said that there is, Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that there was the great scholars of Islam, the early scholars of Islam, they mentioned, Ibn Taymiyyah is referencing them or quoting them. He's saying that they said, ما من نفسي, there is no soul إلا وفيها ما في نفسي فرعون except that in the nafs, there's no individual, except in his nafs is what was in the nafs of Fir'aun. 
the transgression and the wrongdoing and the crimes that Fir'aun had in him, that, yani that Tughiyan, that Fir'aun had in him, that, uh, that tyrannical, ignorant, oppressive mindset that Fir'aun had, every nafs has that. What is the difference? The difference here is Fir'aun had the ability to execute that feeling because he was in control, he, was, he had a position. So he, he brought that trait out. He brought it out. And other than Fir'aun, they were unable to do it because they're not, yeah, they don't have the followers and they don't have the power and the money and not, whatnot. So what do they do? They, they, because they are unable, they hid that trait. You see? So this nafs, if this statement is uh, yani said like that, we should all be scared. And that is why we always have to remember that we don't want to worship our nafs. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says in the Quran, أَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ أَفَأَنْتَ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِ وَكِيلًا those who take their desires as their Lord, they worship their nafs. Their nafs tells them to do something, and they do it. Whereas if Allah was to tell them to do something else, they wouldn't do it. Their nafs is what commands them. Their nafs is what prohibits them. Their nafs is the source of legislation for them. Not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. Allah says, Ara'ayta, do you not see manitakhada ilahahu hawa? The one that has taken his desires as his Lord. His ilah is what? His hawa, his desires is. No one can help you, Yawm al Qiyamah, if you're one who follows his desires in everything. And that you do everything that comes to your heart and mind. Walidharika, the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he instructed and he himself used to do it. That we make the following dua by saying, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, give my nafs piety. Give it taqwa. Give it the fear that it, is ne that it needs. Make it righteous. Make my nafs conscious of you, oh Allah. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, give my nafs piety. That is the dua that the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam used to say. Wallahi, what you don't want it to happen is that you come yawmul qiyamah. And when you come the day of judgment, you thought that you did righteous action. You thought you exerted a lot of effort. But you come the day of judgment and what really is waiting for you is the punishment and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is going to happen to you? You're going to be gobsmacked. You're going to be mind boggled. What has happened? What is taking place in that situation? There's no running away. There's no one who can help you. ولذلك Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ لَفْتَدَوْا بِهِ مِنْ سُوءِ مِنْ سُوءِ الْعَذَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَبَدَى لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا if it was for the oppressors, if, يعني, if the oppressors and the wrongdoers were to have ما في الأرض جميعا ومثله معه If they were to have what is on this earth If they were to have this, يعني, the, everything on this earth If they were to have it, the wrongdoers and the criminals What would they have done? لَفْتَدَوْ بِهِ مِنْ سُوءِ الْعَذَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ They would have given all of that to free themselves from the hellfire and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَبَدَى لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُونَ It became clear to them. It became clear to them that all of the good that they did was really not for them. وَبَدَى لَهُمْ It became clear to them that which they were doing, وَبَدَى لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُونَ and they came the day of judgment and they thought they came to the day of judgment and they saw that which they were not expecting. Mujahid ibn Jabrin, the great tabi'i, the great scholar, and the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas, an imam in tafsir, who took the entire tafsir from ibn Abbas three times, from beginning to end, from beginning to end, from beginning to end. He took the entire tafsir from ibn Abbas, Mujahid ibn Jabrin. Mujahidin, he said, when he came to this ayah, 
He said, Amilu a'mala. These people, they did actions. Tawahamu annaha hasanat. Fa'idha hiya sayyat. These people, they did actions. Yani good actions. Tawahamu annaha hasanat. They thought that they were good actions. Fa'idha hiya sayyat. But in reality, they were sins that which they did. They either did it with no intention. So it became an evil action. Or they did it in a, in a way that wasn't in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu So they were doing innovation. So all of it became clear to them that all the crying and all the dancing that they thought that they were going to get closer to Allah with, all of it is null and void. وَبَدَى لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُونَ Also it was said regarding this tafsir on the, on the ayah, some of the mufassirina they said, عَمِلُوا أَعْمَالًا تَوَهَمُوا أَنَّهُمْ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْهَا قَبْلَ الْمَوْتِ فَأَدْرَكَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَتُوبُوا Another tafsir, another meaning was given to the verse, which was they did actions, yani they committed crimes, they did sins, they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, they thought that they would repent. They said, we're young right now, we're still in our teens, inshallah ta'ala we're going to repent. And inshallah ta'ala that will be when we grow older, right now we just want to have fun, we're just young, I'll get there. And what happened to them is death came to them before they could repent. فَأَدْرَكَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَتُوبُوا Death came to them before they could repent. They did not live their lives with preparation. They didn't work. They came with الْأَمْنُ مِنْ مَكْرِ اللَّهِ They felt secure from the plans and the plots of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's plan and Allah's punishment, they found from it safety, security. They said that there's nothing to worry about. Ikrimat ibn Ammarin, he said, Jaza'a Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir inda mawtihi jaza'an shadida. Ikrimah ibn Ammarin, he mentioned that Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir, the great tabi'i, when he was on his deathbed, he became very, very frightened. Faqila lahu, they said to him, why are you so frightened? Why are you so scared? Why are you so nervous? قال, he said, There is a verse in the book of Allah in which I fear, I am scared of. And the ayah is, It has become clear to them. It has become clear to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُونَ that which they did not expect. فَأَنَا أَخْشَى أَنْ يَبْدُوَ لِي مَا لَمْ أَكُنْ أَحْتَسِبْ And he said, Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir said, I am scared that it will become clear to me that which I was not expecting. He was scared. He didn't have this trait that many of us have. الْأَمْنُ مِنْ مَكْرِ اللَّهِ That we are good. We are noble. We have no, no one can uh, judge us. That's the mindset that we came with. And now we're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Laysa baynana wa bayna Allahi turjuman. And there is no one between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's right in front of us. He's questioning us, interrogating us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are we going to say that day? Allah is not one that we can deceive. Allah is not one we can take a lawyer for. And that lawyer will get the case dismissed. And inshallah ta'ala, maybe that might be a means of me not entering the hellfire. That won't work. No lawyer, no solicitor, nothing will work for you that day. Your whole entire actions are documented and they're written. Even before you speak, even before you utter any word, it is all going to be presented to you. And it's all there. Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated. And before I mention the hadith of Abu Hurairah, what I want to mention is that Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir was a great imam who did many hajj. He did many hajj. He came with many righteous actions. With that being said, he still was scared. Did he become a person who depended on his righteous action and say, but I did this, but I did this, but I did this, but I did this. Did he, is, that, is that what he said? And he, the Prophet told us in the hadith of Abu Hurairah that I'm going to mention, Muslim and Bukhari narrated, Bukhari and Muslim both narrated, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, 
من حج فلم يرفض ولم يفسق رجع كيوم ولدته أمه anyone who goes and does hajj and does not commit any sin in hajj does not يعني come with fisq does not does not have sexual intercourse that person will come back like the day his mother gave birth to him sinless that's how he's going to come Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir could have said this hadith is going to applies on me I've not only done one hajj but I've done many hajj so I am a person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven me for my sins وَهَكَذَا he could have said that but he didn't rely on that he didn't rely on that he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that he's going to, go, going to go to. So we need to be very, we need to be very cautious. And we also have to be, we need to take heed. There's a story inshallah ta'ala I want to mention of how important it is that we take heed in all of our actions and that we don't delay anything for tomorrow. Al-A'sha, who was an Arab poet, a well-known poet, of the poets of the Arabs. And Quraysh knew of Al-Asha. I mean, everyone knew Asha. Asha's words were very highly respected. If Al-Asha said something, it was memorized and it was circulate, it would circulate uh, in the, uh, um, the society. Everyone would be speaking about his lines of poetry. He had influence. Al-Asha, made the decision that he was going to take Islam. He said, I'm no longer going to be upon this way. I need to rectify myself. I need to go to Muhammad and take Islam. So he got his riding beast ready. He put his belonging on there and he made his way to Medina. Quraysh heard of this. So they, uh, they ran after him and they intercepted him. And they told him, Al-Asha, what are you trying to do? Why are you trying to take Islam for? What do you need? What is it that we can do for you? So he dismissed everything that they put on the table. He said, I am going to go to Muhammad and I'm going to take this religion in which he propagates and he calls to. They said to him then, did you not hear Muhammad? He bans and he forbids zina. Did you not know that? Muhammad does not allow you to have sexual intercourse with a woman before marriage. Did you not know that? Al-Asha said, I'm a very old man. I'm not sexually driven. At this moment, that isn't my problem. I'm more than happy to follow him in that command. Then they thought. But they said, did you not also hear that he also forbids alcohol? He forbids intoxication. He doesn't allow it. Did you know that? Did you hear that? Al-Asha said, is that what he does? He said, yes. Muhammad does not allow alcohol. And alcohol is forbidden in his religion. And then he said, okay, if that is the case, I, am, I love alcohol. This year, I'm going to drink alcohol and I'm going to drink. And I'm going to make sure that I yani, reach uh, my pinnacle. And when I finish and I enjoyed it and I have spent all my time with it, I'm going to stop and I'm going to go to Muhammad and I'm going to take Islam. They said that same year in which he was drinking the alcohol, he died and passed away. So he delayed a righteous action. He died in other than Islam. The people who called him and made him not go to Muhammad are shayateen. He obeyed them. He listened to them. He also obeyed his nafs. The poet, he said, فَإِنْتَكُ بِالْأَمْسِ اقْتَرَفْتَ إِسَاءَةً فَثَنِّ بِإِحْسَانٍ وَأَنْتَ حَمِيدُ وَلَا تُرْجِ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ إِلَى غَدٍ لَعَلَّ غَدًا يَأْتِي وَأَنْتَ فَقِيدُ the poet, he said, If yesterday you did a sin and you committed crimes, then today is a second chance. You have a second chance. Today you have a chance. So what do you do? Come with righteous action. Do not delay good deeds for tomorrow. Because tomorrow could come and you are dead. If you've done a sin in the past, then you have another chance today. That was yesterday you did the sin. You have a chance today to repent and ask Allah for forgiveness. And also, if there's any righteous action that you can do 
this moment, do it. Don't push it to tomorrow because it, tomorrow could come, but you're not there. Tomorrow might come and you are not alive. So don't delay any righteous action. Al-A'sha, that's what he did. This is the problem. He delayed a righteous action for tomorrow. He pushed it backwards, but he didn't live for it. وَلِذَلِكَ our messenger instructed us. The best action in Islam after the shahadatayn is what? The salah. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa used to say to his companions, إِذَا قُمْتَ فِي صَلَاتِكَ If you stand up for your prayer, فَصَلِّ صَلَاةَ مُوَدِّعٍ Pray the salah of one who is not going to pray ever again. Pray this salah as though it's going to be your last salah. I now ask you a question. How would you pray your last salah? Isn't that not an important question? How do you pray your last salah? What are the things that you would do in your last prayer? You would make sure that ruku is long. You would make sure that that qiyam is long. You would make sure that dua is that you can make, you would make it all in the sujood. You would make sure that the recitation of the Quran is read. يعني بالتجويد والإتقان. You're going to do that. You're going to beautify your voice. You're going to make sure you stand properly when you pray. You're going to make sure that your salah has khushu'. All of that you will make sure because you know there's no prayer after this. إذا قمت في صلاتك فصلي صلاة مودعين. The Prophet said that عليه الصلاة والسلام. Do not delay a righteous action for tomorrow. Tomorrow might come and you're not alive. ولذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى he says ليس بأمانيكم ولا أماني أهل الكتاب من يعمل سوءا يجز به ولا يجد له من دون الله وليا ولا نصيرا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says it is not your wishful thinking and it is also not the wishful thinking of the people of the scripture من يعمل سوءا anyone who does any evil action يجز به he will be punished in accordance to that. وَلَا يَجِدْ And he will not find لَهُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ For him, besides Allah, وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا One that's going to give him a victory and aid him and support him. He won't find it. If you've committed crimes and you've done wrong, no one is able to protect you from the punishment of Allah. When it comes to you, there's no one who can help you. You won't have any allies. You won't have anyone aiding or supporting you. So what is it that you must, you must do? You must depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan. And Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel. Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.